so I think in that regard, it's a dramatization that works so well as a romantic you know, dramatization of what that kind of psychology would ultimately boil down to because Ayn Rand is able to create a fictional universe in which that situation presents itself, which is rare to find in so you know pure and stylized a form in real life. So it's hard to know what would happen, which is why fiction is so valuable in part, I think. So I think we can only conjecture about the particulars of what would have to happen and who, how bad would you have to be and then what circumstances would you have to encounter in order to have to have that clear a realization. You know, and I think there would be other questions like how smart and insightful do you have to be such that you even put the two together and you make the connection and are there outs for you? And there's, just, it's very hard to say, you know, whether you would be driven that insane and under what circumstances. But I think people have been driven insane in varying degrees by varying levels of self-deception over time, especially if it's led to really bad actions with really horrible consequences. There's also the plot of Atlas Shrugged isn't that really evil people over the course of a normal lifespan right. will end in Jim Taggart's situation. Yeah. Part of the plot of Atlas Shrugged is that the heroes of the novel have done something very unusual right. to engineer a kind of situation in which the full consequences of the bad people's actions will be made. Um, will be put in stark relief. Will be put in especially yeah. stark relief. Right. And in, in Jim Taggart's case, it happened in a even starker than was intended by the heroes uh, for most people situation that had to do with him, you know, literally torturing the main hero of the novel. Right. So, um, but then you have other dramatizations of, have you guys seen Breaking Bad? You haven't. I no, but I don't know who out there has seen or Grant, have you watched the show Breaking Bad? Not really. No, I like a select <laughs> episode. Yeah. Dostoevsky is a yeah. good example, but there are, you know, other portrayals of characters who progressively, who begin, with just small rationalizations or, you know, begin in a way that we could kind of imagine ourselves or somebody close to us starting to kind of fall in a bad way of giving, you know, giving ourselves little excuses to get away with minor uh, transgressions and whether it's, oh, you know, I'll take a towel from the hotel. They probably stock enough of them that it won't matter and I could really use it for tomorrow, you know. And then it kind of gets bigger and bigger by degrees and it builds on itself and then you kind of, you see how the person progressively has to tell bigger lies to themselves, has to deal with harder to evade you know, consequences of their actions and just, it, it drives them crazy in various ways. And I think the, because those authors, though romantic, might be a little just less imaginative than Rand in the sense that they don't, project, they're not quite as original in the situations they set up. I don't wanna shortchange sure Dostoevsky, but Definitely you can kind of, original. To some, exactly so. I don't want to say that, but that you can kind of, at least you can get a range of examples of fictional yeah. characterizations of this that you can then project on. Another thing you might do, but you have to be careful about how objective and how accurate they are, but is read biographies of dictators. Right. I mean, Hitler and Stalin did not end well, and it wasn't just their existential circumstances that yeah. were bad. Or and murderers. Were, yeah, you know, I, round of the mill, you know, mass mill, murder yeah. types. But it lot, but it's going to be really hard to tell a lot of the time because they're so emotionally and mass detached murderers and, uh, and probably crazy. start from mental illness rather right. than other. But well, someone it varies, but yeah. primarily. So. But someone like you know, if you <laughs> if you read about Hitler and his psychology and what and what drugs he was on and why and so forth, he, he comes across as someone who was driving <laughs> himself crazy. Yeah. And also, there, you know, I mean, Stalin's daughter wrote a like <coughs> memoir, so you can find out, you know. Now, of course, any memoir written by someone who knew someone, you know, you, there are issues <coughs> of how accurate it is and how much they're working out their own demons. But um, right. there's knowledge to be there. Are, there's information sources on these people. Yeah, I think there are more mundane versions of that phenomenon that are less dramatic but more common in terms of just being a much slower, quieter kind of descent into being really lame more than anything, just being someone who is just kind of not doing much, not amounting to yeah, much, and kind of just But you're talking about, about how bad people can get worse. 
Yank is asking about how how they can drive really crazy. Evie, evil people might you know become insane, <coughs> uh, have a mental breakdown or something. Right. And I think for that we well, really need examples of super evil. People. Yeah, but I think there's a continuous slope there. I don't think these are completely unrelated phenomena because I think people I've worked with people in therapy who tell themselves and me a lot of lies and who deal with it by kind of just having a sort of a break from reality, but not one that's psychotic in the way that, you know, someone with an organic mental illness would present, but rather this kind of weird internal consistency, but that's got this like fluidity to it so that they can kind of sound like locally coherent in whatever they're saying. But you realize that all of it's kind of full of shit. And so I think there is more continuity than you're saying. If I were to come across somebody who is like James Taggart or somebody who is as evil as like a dictator, like could you have somebody that could in effect just by stating the truth lead them to that or like what things have to go into that? I think there are mundane versions of that that happen much more often and yeah. are easier to imagine. You know, yeah. the thing you say to someone super insecure that's just going to unravel them. I think there are, there are several people I can think of just on the fly for whom I would know what to say. So I don't think that that's a crazy question. Yeah, that. but the idea that, that there's, that that there's some to... phrase you can weaponize that'll save the world. Uh, yeah, that, but is that I what mean, you're trying to do? If that could have been done, someone would have dispensed with Donald Trump uh, sure. by now. And likewise for several other of our leaders in America, much less Kim Jong-un or something. Uh, so, but I do think that there is something similar to this that we do all the time and can do. Um, which is there are kinds of questions you can ask people or positions you can put them in that do the kind of thing that the heroes in Atlas did, which is put the moral issues into sharper focus mm -hmm. so that somebody who could have been skating by That's in funny. drift is put into a situation where they either have to face something or evade it mm -hmm. and, uh, and whereby they either morally grow or get worse. And I think one can, you know, not always, but often enough engineer those kinds of situations. Mm -hmm. But how to do it is something that, you know, requires, it's a skill it's one develops. Art, yeah. And it's a somewhat delicate art, yeah. But I think part of good teaching involves doing that. I expect good psychotherapy involves doing that. And even being a good friend, you know, can involve doing that. A uh, good parent right. 